In this video course, we're going to be looking at exemptions from the controls of retail sale. Um, and also at the end, we're going to be looking at emergency supplies of medicines. So the vast majority of medicines are supplied to patients through registered pharmacies. Now, there are exemptions which allow others to supply GSL, P and POMs. Now, if we consider the exemptions, so GSLs, we've already considered how GSLs could be sold without supervision of a pharmacist and they could be sold from um, anywhere from supermarkets to vending machines. Um, hospitals and health centres. Now, when we were looking at retail pharmacy businesses, I mentioned that the activities of a hospital relating to the supply of medicines to patients under their care are exempt from the requirement for that premises to be registered as a pharmacy. We'll look a little bit more detail um, at hospitals and a few other groups that have exemptions. So hospitals and health centres, they don't necessarily have to be registered pharmacies, although many hospitals do. But clearly they don't have to function, they could, sorry, they could not function if they can't supply or administer medications to patients. So these centres and hospitals can supply medicines to patients provided it's in the course of business of a hospital. In other words, the supplies are made to patients in response to a direction from an appropriate practitioner. Usually that's a doctor or a dentist, but it could be a nurse, pharmacist or a supplementary prescriber. In those circumstances, the hospital may supply any medicinal product for the purpose of being administered, whether it's in the hospital or elsewhere. It's important to note that for POM, the directions have to be written, but they don't have to fulfil the normal prescription requirements. Therefore, entries in the patient's bed, card or notes can be considered written directions for administration or supply. Um, but for P and GSL medicines, the directions don't have to be written. Now, a patient-specific direction is something... Um, that's termed as a written instruction from a doctor, dentist or other independent prescriber for a medicine to be supplied or administered to a named patient after the prescriber has assessed the patient on an individual basis. So a key example there would be an inpatient chart on a hospital ward. They've made an assessment and they write down what they think that patient should be supplied or administered. Now, doctors and dentists often give medicines direct to the patient. So that can happen on a house call with a doctor um, and they can give you supply of medicine. This doesn't apply to nurse prescribers who should not be responsible for both the prescription and supply. In the case of independent pharmacist prescribers, it's re recommended that prescribing supply should be carried out by the same individual in exceptional circumstances only. So again, there should be two different people carrying out those two different things. Now, midwives, um, they have exemptions both on the sale and supply of certain medicinal products, but only in the course of their professional duty. These are all GSL and P medicines and some POMs. Clearly it would be unlawful um, if, for instance, a midwife supplied diclofenac to a male for pain. Obviously that doesn't sound like it's going to be in the, in the course of their professional duty. In addition, midwives, they're allowed to administer certain injections, again, in course of their professional practice. Only those medications for which an exemption exist can be sold, supplied or administered. If that exemption um, doesn't exist for that medication, then such action would be illegal. Now, podiatrists or chiropodists, um, as with midwives, only certain medicines can be sold, supplied or administered. Basically, any chiropodist can, in the course of their professional practice, sell or supply ready-made products for external use, which are DSL or in limited cases P. Now, these things um, can include myconazole, so dactarin for treating athlete's foot, um, glutarol, so that's glutaraldehyde for treating warts on the feet. So very specific for foot um, problems. As mid midwives, again, chiropodists also have exemptions on both sale and supply of certain medicinal products in the course of their professional duty, and also the right to administer certain injections provided they hold the necessary certificates of competence. If they don't hold the certificates, then they cannot sell or supply certain medicines, such as codigamol, ibuprofen, um, antifungal treatments, and topical hydrocortisone. But they can still, however, sell and supply some medicinal products. In addition to exemptions for sale and supply, if a chiropodist holds a certificate of competence in the use of analgesics, they may administer certain injections, and these are really um, generally the local anaesthetics. Now, optometrists, again, similarly, they're allowed to sell or supply certain medicinal products in the course of their professional practice. These obviously tend to be eye drops and ointments for such conditions as infections and treatments for glaucoma. However, if the premises can be closed to the, closed to the public, then GSL medicines can be sold by retail in any circumstances, um, and that can be useful for eye lotions, etc. 
Now optometrists can supply some eye drops and eye ointments, which are POMs. Now, in order to do this, in order to obtain the supplies of these POMs from a pharmacist, they need to present a signed order. Now, a signed order isn't a prescription. Um, it's a type of um, document that allows the authority to supply a POM issued by an appropriate practitioner. And an optometrist, in this case, is, a, is an appropriate practitioner. Now, the pharmacist has to be satisfied that the product is labelled accordingly and a PIL is provided and an entry is made in the POM register. In other words, a pharmacist would treat it like a prescription even though it isn't a prescription. Further details on the um, capabilities for sell and supply of POMs is available in the MEP. So if we consider ambulance paramedics, they would generally have a certificate of proficiency in ambulance paramedic skills and they can administer certain parenteral POMs for the immediate and necessary treatment of sick or injured persons. Other categories of people who can be exempt for um, the sale and supply of medicines, we have things such as drug treatment services, shipping personnel, offshore installations, um, public analysts, aircraft commanders, first aid organisations, um, and the exhaustive list is is contained within the MEP and some of them are also found on the MHRA website and also in Dale and Appleby. Now another type of supply we're going to consider is wholesale dealing. Now this is the process by which uh, many of the exempt groups and individuals obtain supplies of medicines from pharmacies. So in order to sell supply administer medicines um, from these people or organisations they have to obtain them and the way of obtaining them is through a wholesale transaction. Now the sale is um, being done to a person who buys a substance in order to sell it, supply it or cause it to be administered in the course of their business. Um, wholesale deals, dealing also um, requires a licence, so the person actually carrying out the wholesale dealing um, will actually require a licence. Wholesaling by pharmacists. So the MHRA does allow a limited amount of non-commercial wholesaling by pharmacies. So pharmacies can trade small amounts of medicines to UK healthcare providers for patient supply or treatment. They can also supply to other pharmacies, but the quantities must be small and they must be only on an occasional basis. And it can't also um, be done so for, for profit. Now, sales of <clears throat> Sorry, sales of pea and POM medicines by wholesale dealing can only take place if the purchaser is authorised to sell or supply the goods or administer them in the course of their business. So really it's about those practitioners or those people who are exempt from the sale and supply. So who can be supplied? So we've got the practitioners, as I've said, doctors, dentists, vets, any person lawfully conducting a retail pharmacy business. Um, authorities or persons carrying on the business of a hospital or a health centre, any person who may sell or supply by retail um, by virtue of an exemption, for example, midwives and the other healthcare professionals we considered, but only in respect of medicinal products covered in their exemption. So how would you deal with a wholesale transaction? So generally the purchaser will issue a signed order. So this is something that is dealt with like a prescription but isn't a prescription. So um, the law doesn't actually set out what information should be c contained uh, within a signed order, but the RPS has re recommended the minimum information that is on there. And that includes the name, quantity, and where necessary, the form and strength of the medication, the name and address, trade, business, or profession of the person requesting the medicine and the person for which it is required, signed and dated by the person requesting the POM. Now, when those medicines are issued to the purchaser records must be made in the POM register or you need to retain copies of an invoice or the signed order itself and within any records you need to have date of supply details of what what was supplied so name quantity strength and form the name and address of the person who was supplied trade business or profession of the person supplied and the purpose for which the product was supplied now, orders or invoices need to be kept for two years if an entry isn't made in the register. Although a written record doesn't need to be made, if orders or invoices are retained, it is considered good practice to make an entry in the POM register as well as retaining the orders and invoices. Because it's been quite a packed video cast, I'm going to leave the topic of emergency supplies and join that up with 
um, another topic around dispensing prescri prescriptions written outside of the UK in another video cast.